Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. All right. Woohoo, it's Thursday. Oh, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, Steve? I hear you. Okay. All right. Um, as the president has made clear, lowering prices for Americans is the president's top economic priority, and today he will sign the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, passed on a bipartisan basis, which will help lower costs for American retailers, farmers, and consumers. He will be joined by bar bipartisan members of Congress and key stakeholders at the signing. In the President's State of the Union address, he called on Congress to address ocean carriers, high prices, and unfair practices because rising ocean shipping costs, which are a major contributing factor to increased costs for American families. During the pandemic, ocean carriers increased their prices by as much as 1,000 percent, and too often these ocean carriers are refusing uh, to take American exports back to Asia, leaving with empty containers instead. That's costing farmers and ranchers and our economy a lot of money. This bill will make progress reducing costs for families and ensuring fair treatment for American businesses, including farmers and ranchers. The President looks forward to fulfilling this promise and signing this bill into law. Next, uh, as a former chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, the President is proud to, uh, to, to announce, uh, proud of the federal judges he has nominated and the unprecedented diversity that they represent. Yesterday, we continued that trend by putting forward Bradley Garcia, who, who would be, if confirmed, the first Latino to ever serve on the D.C. Circuit. The grandson of immigrants from Cuba, Mr. Garcia's credentials are already being praised out of the gate by legal experts across the political spectrum. He has represented clients in over 50 cases before federal and state appellate courts and argued 13 cases before federal and state appellate courts. And with that, Will, you want to kick us off? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, when was the last time the president was tested for COVID? And can you please give us more guidance on uh, why the White House isn't announcing uh, these tests unless they ask about them? Well, the president has a regular testing cadence determined by his doctor. Uh, as we have said many times, if he were a, a to be a close contact, as defined by the CDC, uh, because that's what we follow, we would update his testing cadence accordingly and share that with all with all of you uh, with uh, with transparency. Clearly, um, he has not had a close contact that would change that cadence, so it stays as a regular cadence that he that is uh, in close uh, coordination with his doctor. But wouldn't we not know about the close contact until we we'll have. if there were a close contact we would share that we would have the transparency and share that he just has not been a close contact okay on, on another topic um, is the White House concerned that European uh, leaders might be pressuring Zelensky to make concessions um, I'm interested that the visit by European leaders today <coughs> was that a show of support uh, or is that an intervention by people that are looking for the war to stop so I, I would let the European leaders uh, speak for themselves on their country's uh, travel and, and their goals and agenda for that travel. Uh, nothing has changed about what the President's view here is. Uh, he, he stated it very clearly in his New York Times op-ed uh, not too long ago, and that it is basically nothing, and he said this before, even before the op-ed, which is nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine, and that Ukraine is a sovereign country. Uh, President Zelensky is the democratically elected leader of that country. Country, and he only he gets to determine uh, how this war ends. He gets to determine how he defines victory, and he gets to de determine how the outcome will be. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to follow up on the military mission that captured this senior ISIS leader. Can you just uh, sort of take us behind the scenes here a little bit? When was the president briefed? Uh, how long has this mission been under consideration? What more can you tell us about? So I can what? say the the operation was successful. No civilians were harmed. Uh, nor were there injuries to coalition forces or damage to coalition aircrafts or assets. We, I would have to refer you to the Operation Inherent Resolve. They're the ones who are uh, who who, are run, who ran this process, and they put out a statement, and I'll let them speak to that. Can you tell us, though, any more about this individual and just speak to the continuing threat from ISIS, both abroad and here at home? So here's what I can say, and I, again, I'm going to let the, the Operation Inherent Resolve uh, speak to this. It was a senior ISIS leader. I can confirm that. 
Uh, I just don't have more to share from here. I'll let them speak to, to it more broadly. And okay. make the threat? I, I'll, let, I'll let them speak more broadly since this just happened, but I will go. Hey, Kareem, the stock market is dropping again today. How confident are you that the big rate hike yesterday will tap down on inflation? So here's, here's what I, I will say, is that we understand what, every, what, what American families are going through. Uh, as you know, uh, this has been a priority, uh, bringing down in, inflation and doing everything that we can uh, from, our, from our perch to, to make that happen. Um, we, uh, uh, we, as the President has said and has, he's written about, we are going to give the Federal Reserve uh, their, uh, their space to, uh, to their independence to deal with the monetary policies as they have uh, the ability to do, uh, and it's important to do that. Many presidents before uh, had not allowed uh, that uh, that to be uh, that to be uh, moved forward and that to, to, to happen. But we are, but because it is well established uh, that countries with independent central banks have better economic outcomes over time, this part of our transition to stable and steady growth with lower inflation, that is the kind of economy that delivers uh, for working families. And so we're just going to give the Federal Reserve the space to do the, to do what they need to do. And then secondly, there are reports that the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act to expand production of semiconductors could be slimmed down. What do you think about this? Would you still support a slimmed down version? Well, you know, we appreciate, uh, we know the House and, and the Senate have been working, uh, working very hard to get a bipartisan base, on a bipartisan basis through the co uh, conference uh, conference process. So we're encouraged by the process in that, uh, by the progress in that, and we support an effort to find common ground uh, to reach a final agreement. And so the President and Congress share the same goal, which is to have something done. Uh, by this summer, and so we know that companies are making decisions this summer on where to invest next year, but we know that they're they're currently working really hard to make sure that this is a bipartisan process. Okay. Two quick ones for you, or two subjects for you, Kareem, thank you. Um, what, is there any change in the White House's involvement in this ongoing attempt to get back to missing Americans in Ukraine, or any coordination with the Ukrainian government uh, <coughs> trying to do so, and has the President uh, either been in touch with or sought to speak with their family? So we can't confirm these reports. We don't know uh, where their whereabouts are. Um, we are working very hard to learn more about about this, about their uh, about these t uh, Americans who are now missing. Our hearts go out to their families uh, during this difficult time uh, that they're going through. It's worth repeating, and we have said this many times, that uh, it is not the time to go to America, uh, to, sorry, it's not the time for Americans to go to uh, Ukraine during this time of war. Uh, the State Department has put out uh, numerous uh, travel uh, advisories warning Americans not to travel there and, use it, and urging Americans to leave immediately if you are. Uh, you mentioned the president's the former chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. He was involved in the confirmation of Clarence Thomas. There are reports this morning about his wife and her interactions with John Eastman, the attorney who was pushing the idea that Vice President Pence could do something to block the certification. And now the January 6th committee says they are planning to talk to her. Yeah. Does the president have any concern about Justice Thomas continuing to serve on the court, or would he perhaps suggest that he should recuse himself from any cases that come before it regarding January 6th? So that is something that, that the court has to decide. That is not uh, for us uh, to comment on. Uh, I can say this. Uh, we have full confidence in the uh, uh, the select committee, January 6th select committee, and it is for them to decide how they're going to move forward on, on their particular uh, process that they're going through. Does he plan to watch the hearings today or in the coming Well, um, I think he has said this before, and I've said this a couple days ago. He's, he's probably going to catch it here and there. He has a busy schedule. Uh, I'm sure uh, folks around him, his senior staff, will update him, update him as needed. Okay. Yeah, Peter. Thanks, Green. Why is the president saying that in, in pardon, no. why is the president <laughs> saying that inflation is worse everywhere but here? Uh, because what we have seen uh, across the globe, first of all, inflation is a global challenge, as we have said. Uh, it is, uh, it is, it is, it is caused by uh, uh, clearly um, the pandemic, this once in a generation pandemic that we are coming out of. And also, uh, most recently, uh, the war that, uh, that Putin started in Ukraine that has caused inflation as we look at food and as we look at gas prices. So 
if you look at globally other countries, um, and if you look at where we are economically, when you think about the Group 7, the G7, uh, we are in a much stronger place than we are economically than, than the rest. And, and also, I did, I did yep. look globally, though. He says that inflation is worse everywhere but here. That's not true. The U.S. has worse inflation than Germany, France, Japan, Canada, India, Italy, Saudi Arabia. Well, so why is he saying that? I think we, what we are saying is that uh, when you talk about inflation, it is a global thing. And it is not just about the United States. This is something that everyone is feeling because of coming out of once in, once in a lifetime pandemic, because of the war that Russia has started in Ukraine. Okay, why isn't the president asking oil companies to drill more here in the U.S.? Can, let me just let me just give you a little bit of a rundown of why we are here. Um, when, and just, what, I know his letter was a lot about refining and increasing refining, but that's a lot of oil that comes in from overseas. So why isn't he asking so, companies to drill more here in the U.S.? Well, hold on. So here we go. So this is where we are. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of why we are here and what's going on and why we wrote the letter. So due to decreased demand at the start of the pandemic, U.S. oil refineries reduced their capacity by more than 800,000 barrels per day. Now that consumers' demand has returned, thanks to the President's recovery plan, oil refineries have still not brought refinery capacity back to the pre-pandemic level. So that is the problem, and that is what we're trying to address. At the same time, Putin's invasion of Ukraine put pressure on global supply and gas prices have gone up by nearly $2 since before the invasion. So President Biden has taken historic actions to elevate this pressure, releasing record amounts of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and relying, uh, relaying the world to, 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 relaying the world to, release, to release oil too. That's at 240 uh, million uh, barrels of oil that he was able to do with his partnership. And so we are now at the highest levels of domestic production. So we actually have uh, of crude oil since April April of 2020 with an additional 9,000 approved drilling permits that remain unused, but refinery capacity needs to come back too. So that is what the problem is. We need them to actually refine uh, the crude oil, which is not happening, and that's what we're calling on oil companies Why not to do. Why drill more here in the U.S., though? We, because we don't need to do that. What we need them to do is, with the oil that's out there, we need the, to, them to refine that oil so that, we, so that prices, so that the capacity could go up and then prices it would go down, okay. inherently go down. Yeah. And so I know the president once said that he was going to end fossil fuel. Is that now off the table? No, we are going to continue uh, to move forward with our uh, clean energy uh, proposal, our climate change uh, and, and so proposal. Is that the, is that the priority? So here, climate I, change I, I, over gas. Prices? No, that's not what we're saying. We're what saying we're saying that. President we're saying I'm answering I'm answering the question. Is his priority I'm answering lowering question. gas prices or is it addressing climate change? First of all, we, it's, you can do both at the same time. What we're trying to deal for, uh, what we're trying to uh, deal with right now is how do we lower cost for American families? And one of the things that we are seeing currently right now with oil refineries is they are using this moment that there is a war in Ukraine to, to actually make a profit when they there are steps that they can take so that we can actually lower lower gases low gas prices for families and so the president has taken action right we've talked about the strategic petroleum that he's done tapping into barrels how much is that lowered prices it, here's the thing here's the thing peter if we had if the president had not taken the actions that he's taken in the past several months it would not. It, the prices that we see now would be a lot worse. It's actually blunted uh, some of the increase uh, that could have been. Uh, and so the the president has taken action. He has been a leader. Now he's asking Congress clearly to act in, in certain ways, uh, uh, and also asking for the oil refineries to do their part and not make money off of a time of war. That's what we're talking about here. Go ahead, I Peter. Want to follow up on a couple questions. First, the AP asked you. The first question out of the case was when the president was last tested. We just yeah. didn't get an answer. To that, like I did. I gave. I, it's a regular cadence. That's what we do. We will share this. We will share per CDC uh, when he is a close contact and he has not been a close contact. If he were a close contact, we will let you know. Again, I'm just confused because in the past you guys have always told us the date of the most recent test. So why can't you tell us the date of the most well, recent test? Well, right now test? I'm telling you he has a regular cadence. I just don't have a date to share with okay. you, but he does have a regular weekly I'm cadence. We trust that as soon as you find out today, your staff we will have. We will, ha we will be transparent test. about that. But he does have a weekly cadence. I just don't have a day in front of you of when he was last tested. And as soon as you go back there and find out the date, you'll share with us. You're saying. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that he has a weekly cadence. I guess that's my question. 
And why has that changed? Because in the past, it's, they always told us. Well, in the, we have always said it's a weekly cadence. We have always said that. But Jen would say it happened on Tuesday. Just yesterday, he had a test. Or on Sunday, he was tested. It was negative. But, but he hasn't been a close contact. What we have said now is that if he is a close contact, according to the CDC, what close contact of that definition, the definition of a close contact, we will share that with you. And then that's when his testing cadence would change. His testing cadence has not changed. He gets tested every, once a week. I don't have the date in front of in front of me at this time. So he gets tested once a week. That's because in the past it's a it weekly, been more regular It's a than weekly. That. No, it actually has never. It's always been a weekly cadence of he, getting tested. So he's only been tested once a week for the entirety of the time the president. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is what we normally do is he gets test he gets tested weekly and that's been that's been his cadence as as when he's talking to as in coordination with his with his doctor. There has been time where he's tested more than that because we've traveled. When we traveled, we have all had to uh, take tests as we're traveling or other things or when he went to uh, the White House correspondence dinner, we had to we had to test as well. So sometimes it's not once a week. But I'm saying to you right now, it's a weekly testing cadence. That's what we do as it's as is it's coordinated with his doctor. Okay. Please, please understand that we're requesting to know as soon as you can tell us when the most recent test was. Acknowledging it's a recent test. Let me ask you. We saw the letter. Well, that you I already wrote. I'm already telling you he's get tested okay. regularly so in, our, in a so weekly our, test. I'm saying our request continues. So the, the and I'm telling is, you that he gets tested weekly. Okay. So, so go let ahead. me ask you. Let me ask you about the oil companies if I can. Really yeah, quickly. for sure. We saw the letter that he wrote to them. Um, they they called for them to be in touch with the energy secretary to convene. Uh, an emergency meeting on that topic. Any? Can you have any update on when that meeting will take so place? So we're, fina we're finalizing details, and we'll be sure to, to pass that along as soon as we can. Um, the president noted in his letter uh, what he wants to do, and it, it, what he wants to make sure is that uh, there is that we create a forum so that uh, the oil companies are able to pu put forth ideas. But he's willing to do everything he can uh, from his from his uh, from a reasonable using reasonable tools to get things done. And he wants to put forward ideas but beyond that I think you know he wrote a letter and he said yeah. hey I'm calling on you to do this you said I want them to be they need to be patriotic in real terms what power does the president have here how can he compel these companies beyond in effect begging them asking them to do anything well that's what one of the things that we want to do is have this meeting and hear from them and hear what the ideas that they come they come forth with, and maybe there's a way that we can help them um, meet that capacity. So he does want to create an environment, which is what the Energy Department is going to do, hopefully in the next couple of days, uh, to sit down with the oil companies and try to figure out how do we do this in a way uh, that both both sides uh, can can agree on. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I have two topics, but really quickly, just following on Peter, is, yeah. has the White House changed its policy on how much he will disclose no, to us? No, it's about the it's it's not. I, it's not. I'm. I was asked, has he been tested? I'm saying that he gets tested okay. weekly, and that's what we actually have said. I do not have a date when he was tested this week, uh, but he is tested weekly, as it is, uh, you know, in coordination with his doctor. We've always said that. We have always said that he tests weekly. Things different than in the past. Well, you're asking yeah. me when he was tested. I'm saying that I don't have a date for you at this time. But you're also saying you're not going to share this today. Well, because it, because he gets tested weekly, and we have said once once if he becomes a close contact, we will share that with you. But if he's not a close contact, then you just know that he gets tested weekly. Well, if he has not had a close contact. You're not going to tell us the date of his most recent test. I'm telling you, he got breast. He gets tested weekly. Okay. Um, why is there yeah. no patient though for that? That's I mean, okay. Different. This is different than in the past. Yeah, I don't get that. We have previously been told when he got his most recent test. I am saying to you, I don't have a date for you right now, but he gets tested weekly. As, as we've said many times, if he were a close contact, as defined by the CDC, we would update his testing cadence accordingly and share that with you transparently. That's what, if he's a close contact, we will share the date with you. He has not had a close contact. That would change that cadence. Okay, I want to move on. The second thing okay. we would like All to right. I mean, that's, that's what I, that's what, that's what we've been uh, saying for the, for, for some time now. There are reports that the White House is weighing a series of executive actions if Roe is overturned, things like a national health emergency mm -hmm. or fighting state efforts to criminalize travel for abortion. Can you confirm these things are under consideration? Are there other actions you're looking at? So the administration continues to explore every possible option in response to the anticipated Supreme Court decision in Dobbs, which would take away women's rights uh, guaranteed for nearly 50 years under Roe v. Wade to make their own choices about their reproductive health 
if the Supreme Court overturns Roe, we will need Congress to take action to restore Roe. I don't have anything else to share on that. And the President's meeting yesterday with um, Schumer and Pelosi, did that yield any new plans on how to fight inflation? And why wasn't this meeting on the President's public schedule ahead of time? Uh, it was a private meeting that the president had. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, advise all the meetings, just like his conversations uh, that he has with members of Congress. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail what was discussed, but he has regular conversations with with members of Congress. Okay. Uh, on housing, Kareem, yeah. um, given the rising <clears throat> interest rates for mortgages, can you say if the White House is concerned about housing affordability or a slowdown in the housing market? As you know, rates for the 30-year mortgage, mortgage averaged nearly 6% this week, and that jump by more than half a percentage point was the largest one-week increase since 1987. So we know that housing affordability is a central uh, is a central uh, challenge for families. Uh, the president understands that, and this is why he's put forward the housing supply action plan, which includes steps to help boost housing supply and ease the burden of housing cost on families over time. Uh, so now, with the federal uh, actions constitute monetary policy, as we know, which is different. Monetary policy actions uh, help bring inflation down uh, as mortgages rates increase. Increase demand in the housing market should cool. Uh, this is part of our transition uh, to stable and steady growth with lower inflation. That is the kind of economy that, deli that delivers for working families. But again, we have the, uh, that's why the president put forth the housing action plan as well to help families as much best as he could. Yeah. Karina, I know um, this has come up a number of times yeah. in recent weeks. The question about tariffs and what a decision specifically regarding China um, and exclusions might be made. And I guess I'm wondering, can you give us any sense of sort of what is under consideration and what possible timeline we might be looking at? So I, I, we don't have anything to share or preview at this time. It is under consideration. We are discussing this. We just don't have anything for you to share to share at this time. What is being considered? No, not not at this time. Uh, hey, Green. Um, not to belabor this too yeah, much yeah. longer, but can you articulate a little bit when the White House is committing to releasing results of the president's testing? Um, because it's not only the yeah. cadence that we're asking about; yeah. it's when the last time you tested negative. No, I, I understand, and I and and so what I'm trying to say, and this is what. This is in, a, in, a, in, in, in consultation with his doctor. Uh, the president has, has a regular testing cadence. Uh, we have said before that he tests weekly. Um, and again, as we've said many times, if it were to be a close contact, as defined by the CDC, uh, we would update his testing cadence accordingly and share that. We would share what that would look like and be transparent about that. Uh, he has not had a close contact. Because he has not had a close contact, we have not changed uh, that cadence. And it's something that happens with his doctor. I do not have a date for you as to when he was last tested. Do you, has he ever tested positive? N no, he has not. Not that I know of. We, we would share that. I think that is something we would share uh, because then that would change his testing cadence clearly if he had, well, if he had a close contact. And so we would share that with you and, uh, a and uh, be transparent about that. We would be transparent about that. Um, quickly, I wanted to return to something earlier in the week. Um, you were asked whether the president believed that Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was responsible for Jamal Khashoggi's uh, death, and you didn't fully answer that. And I wanted to sort of give you another opportunity on that, but also ask if he disagrees with the U.S. intelligence assessment, which has reached that conclusion. So let me just say this, as, as we've said many times here, the murder of Jamal Khashoggi was um, <clears throat> something that many of us around, uh, around the world took very, very seriously. Uh, you know, um, uh, but I can assure you, I, I, but I can say that um, when the president walked into this administration, when he, uh, this is his first year, uh, he made sure that um, we had, uh, that there was a report, the report was released, and in that report, uh, it had the Khashoggi ban, which is a visa restrict restriction policy. Uh, he wanted to make sure that that was out there. And let me tell you a little bit about that. It allows the State Department to restrict visas for individuals who are acting on behalf of a foreign government, uh, use, tool, use tools of repression against people abroad who criticize their government. This includes those who uh, suppress, harass, 
uh, sur surveil, threaten, or harm journalists, activists, or other persons perceived to be dissidents for their work. Uh, and we can tell you we've used that ban 70 times. Uh, the, visa, the visa restrictions appeal applies to countries worldwide. And so that was something that was incredibly important for the president to do. And look, when it comes to uh, human rights, uh, when it comes to that th that type of leader to leader conversation, this is some this is a president who's a straight shooter and who will not shy away from having uh, that conversation. Uh, so uh, again, we issued an extensive report on Khashoggi's murder, and we instituted that ban as I just laid out, uh, and, uh, and and so that was something uh, that was important for the president to do. And you've heard from him, and he's talked about that. But I'm still not hearing you say yes. He agrees with that assessment that. In MBS authorized the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. What I can say to you is that, um, again, we issued this, this extensive report, um, and we have imposed sanctions or visa restrictions on over 70 Saudi individuals and, and entities, including the Saudi Royal Guard's Rapid Intervention Force. And as we have emphasized, then it was important to reorient but not rapture relations uh, with Saudi Arabia. Uh, and so that was something that was important to do, but we released the report. We've, we've used the ban multiple times. Um, and this is something that we take very, very seriously when it comes to human rights. The president is, is not, will not shy away from having those conversations, uh, especially when he is on this trip. But it, it, the executive summary of this report says, we assess that Saudi Arabia's crown prince Mohammed bin Salman approved and he released, an operation to capture and kill. And he released the report, right? But this is a report. I, I'm telling you, this is something that was the president took very, very seriously, and he released that report. So clearly, uh, you, he would not release that report if he did. It is not something that he believed in, right? So. So yes. So <laughs> I mean, I'm that. trying to answer the question. Thank you All right. Follow up. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Karine, on uh, baby formula, back yeah. on May 22nd, Secretary Vilsack said that an abatement of the shortage will be seen within the next 30 days. We're coming up on that 30-day mark. You guys keep announcing regular announcements of yeah. these flights that are coming over, millions of bottles worth of formula. But when are American families going to see you know, this situation resolved, an actual progress where the shelves are full once again uh, and this problem go away? So as you know, we the president has made this a priority, right? He has used his authorities uh, to make sure that we can do everything we can uh, to help um, uh, to help get baby formula on the shelves, and that's what he's done with the DPA uh, that he authorized, uh, which has helped. Um, and uh, and I can say that we announced the seventh o Operation Fly Formula mission, which will transport. Uh, this happened yesterday, which will transport the equivalent of close to 550,000 bottles of. Of Nestle spe specialty formula from Switzerland to Louisville, some of the most high demand formula in the United States right now. Uh, in addition, when working with domestic manufacturers to wrap up production, including by invoking the domestic production, as I just mentioned, if you look at Abbott, their supplies plan increased production by 25%. Rickett has said it has been able to increase its amount put to the market by 30%. Gerber has said it increased uh, additional supply to the marketplace by 60% since the recall. So we are doing everything that we can, uh, entering into a consent decree uh, agreement between the FDA. Um, so we're going to continue to work. We're going to continue uh, to make sure that uh, we we deliver for the American families, get that, uh, make sure that we get healthy formula. We have to remember how this all started, right? This all started uh, because Abbott, there was a safety concern at Abbott, um, FDA uh, uh, acknowledged that, called them out on that, uh, and then they had to shut down their uh, their facility uh, in Michigan. And so we have continued to to work with them uh, to make sure, and the other manufacturers to get make sure that we get as much baby formula as, as we can, and clearly uh, with the operations that we're doing uh, overseas. If we're coming up to the end of the 30-day assessment that he had said at the end of May. I mean, can you put a time frame on this now? Are yeah. families going to be scrambling the entire summer? Still well, I don't have a timeline for you on, on, on this, but what I can say is we're doing everything that we can from here uh, to make sure that uh, we get, you know, we get healthy uh, baby formula for American families. We know how hard this is at this time. We know how difficult it is, uh, but we have up production, as I just laid out, working with these different manufacturers. We have brought uh, baby formula overseas. We just uh, had a seventh Operation Fly Formula mission uh, just yesterday, so this has been a priority for this president. 
Thank you. Uh, I, I, know you, I know you just said you don't have your own confirmation about the uh, reports of these two Americans in Ukraine. Um, but given that their families are among the people saying this happened, it does seem like something has happened. Um, so given that three other foreigners uh, have been, who have been uh, taken prisoner have been sentenced to death, do you, does the White House have a message to the Kremlin on the treatment of these two Americans, should they have been captured, and specifically on whether you, know, you would like to send a message to the Kremlin vis-a-vis -vis death sentences? Um, I, so when it comes to wrongfully detained and holding hostage Americans as, as bargaining chips, uh, represents a threat to the safety of everyone traveling and working and living abroad. The United States opposes practice everywhere, and we have been very clear about that. Uh, you know, the welfare and safety of U.S. citizens abroad is among the highest priorities uh, of the government, and so you know we continue to be uh, to work aggressively in trying to get back um, some of the wrongfully detained uh, Americans out there in abroad uh, who are being held hostage. I don't have anything more to say on that. Uh, when it comes to the other. The two, the, the two who are um, who are reportedly missing, we just can't confirm that um, at this time. And again, our hearts go out to the family, uh, but it's not something that we can confirm from here. There are, there are whether they whether they've been taken prisoner or not, there are a bunch of Americans in Ukraine uh, in in combat and so on. Um, uh, would there be consequences for for Russia if they if they do? to them what apparently they've already decided to do to three other farmers? I, I can't speak to that at this time, uh, but I can say it is something that we are watching, that we call out. I just don't have anything to share on how, what our actions are going to be. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, thanks, Green. Um, so the Federal Reserve is predicting that uh, growth, GDP growth, for the next two years will be 1.7 percent, under 2 percent, two, under 2 percent for the next three years. So is this what the President considers stable and steady growth? What I can tell you is that uh, we believe that we are in a transition right now, coming out of a uh, economic uh, uh, recovery, a historic economic recovery, uh, because of the work that the president has done this past year and a half. And so we believe that we'll be in that transition. We're going into that transition of stable and steady growth, uh, and uh, and uh, and we're going to continue to do the work uh, that the president has laid out to lower inflation. And so part of that is letting the federal reserve do their part, uh, doing that they have the strongest monetary policies uh, to really deal with this. Uh, we're not going to speak to that. We're going to let them be independent. Uh, but the way that we're seeing this is we are on a track uh, to have that transition uh, to be in that stable growth. But are you just lowering expectations then? What the do you economy, mean by lowering expectations? For the economy going forward for Americans to expect growth and see inflation come down? Well, what we're saying is that We've had this economic growth, right? We've had this historic growth uh, because of the actions the president took with the American Rescue Plan, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law as well, um, and all of the other uh, uh, other um, uh, actions that he has taken when it comes to the economy, which has been very important to meet the moment that we were in a year ago, which we can't forget. There were 20 million people who were uh, on in, on insurance benefit uh, when we first re walked in. 3,000 people a day were dying. Uh, for from COVID, this was a very different time. Uh, and sa now what we're, we're seeing is that that transition uh, of that economic growth is going to get more stable. We saw that uh, with the jobs report that came out about two Fridays ago. And so that's what we are uh, we're, we're looking at, and that's what we're seeing. That's what our uh, our experts here uh, are looking towards, too. And so, but we're also going to continue to try to do everything that we can to lower prices and to lower cost uh, for American families as well. Wait, let me come. Oh, I'm so sorry, MJ. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I so have sorry. A baby for me while sure. I follow up. The yeah. Abbott plant in Michigan has stopped production again because of severe flooding. Um, it sounds like it could be another additional few weeks of delay. Is that something that the White House is monitoring? Do you all, all have an assessment of how much longer this could delay things? So, so obviously. We, we know that we know about the news um, um, from Abbott, and it's disappointing. It's a uh, it is a dis disappointing. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to disregard. 
Um, but, you know, we can't control their timeline. What we can do is continue to focus on what we're going to do, which is ramping up production, increasing supply, and making sure that American families uh, only have access to safe formula. That is the, the focus for us. Uh, that is what we control and what we're making strong progress on through actions like the DPA, Operation Fly Formula. We just announced our seventh, uh, our seventh, uh, 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 seventh uh, flight uh, yesterday and FDA's use of enforcement discretion. FDA has said that it's working closely uh, with company to identify next steps to get the plant open and providing only safe product to the American people. That's the work that we're doing right now is what we can control, uh, and we're going to continue to make that a priority. That's what the president wants to do, uh, and we're going to continue to ramp up production. We cannot, as far as the timeline uh, for Abbott, that is for them to, to speak to. Different shortage question. Um, there is a shortage of tampons, and just wondering if that is on the White House's radar. I mean, is that something that the White House is concerned, you know, could turn into a full blown crisis? And are there any other sort of essential products that the administration is watching closely that could come down the pipeline as another shortage crisis? That's a great question. I would have to check in with the team on what they're tracking. Um, I don't have a list for you right now, but I would just have to track with the team. Can I just do one yeah. to follow up to Peter's question about the letter to the oil companies? Um, you know, you were saying yesterday that a part of the plea to these companies is that it is their patriotic duty to uh, act and do something, especially at a moment when so many Americans are having a hard time with the high gas prices. I mean, these are for-profit oil companies we're talking about, right? So does the president have any, you know, reason to think that these companies, because of a letter from him, will behave differently? And barring that, I mean, are there any policies, regulations that he can resort to to make sure that he is sort of forcing their hand? So the way the president sees this is he has to do everything that he can uh, to make sure that he, in this, in this particular uh, scenario, try to make sure that we lower gas prices for the American public. He has taken actions, as we've listed out, when it comes to the ethanol 15, the homegrown biofuels, uh, which is going to lower prices in uh, more than a thousand uh, gas stations around the country. That's going to be really important. The strategic petroleum is going to be very important. Uh, and it's it has actually had an effect, but we're still, because of uh, Putin's war, we're still seeing uh, Putin's tax hike, uh, we're still seeing $2, uh, of, uh, $2 more of an inc increase per gallon since uh, Putin started uh, amassing his uh, forces on the Ukraine's border. Uh, so what we are trying to do is, by sending out this letter, we want to try to start that conversation and get something done. They're going to meet with the energy uh, secretary, so we have to see. We shouldn't say that it's failed yet or it's not going to happen, because a meeting is going to, is going to, it's going to come forth in the next couple of days. They're going to have the conversation, and we are willing uh, to help them, to help the oil companies in any way, hear their ideas, and see what we can do. So uh, we should let this play out and, and see where we are in a couple of days. The president, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have anything to preview about his schedule, about him being in the meeting. This is uh, the, uh, this is Granholm, as, I, as far as I understand. This is a uh, uh, Secretary Granholm's meeting, and she will uh, be, uh, uh, be moving forward with putting this meeting together. Great, thanks. Human rights follow-up. Human rights follow-up. Does the White House have a comment about the decision of Florida officials not to request delivery of a pediatric vaccine? Yes, we do. We've, we heard about this, um, and I have some, we have a little bit for you here. So we have been talking to states for some time um, uh, in early June, uh, uh, well, in early June. Uh, so the process has been HHS opened up pre-ordering for vaccines for the possibility of kids' vaccination. That ensures that if authorized by the FDA, these vaccines can be shipped to places like pediatricians and children's hospitals, places where parents uh, would get health care uh, for their youngest or as quickly as possible. By being the only state, this is Florida, uh, not pre-ordering, which means that pediatricians for example, in Florida will not have immediate ready access to vaccines. Uh, some pharmacies and community health centers in the state get access through federal distribution channels, but those options are limited for parents. We encourage uh, Florida on several occasions to order vaccines, so we've been aware of this, and we will continue uh, to do so. And the bottom line, is this yeah. going to make it harder for parents in Florida to get vaccines for their kids? If they're not pre-ordering, it will, it will make it harder for them. That's why we continue to uh, continue to, on several occasions, encourage, encourage Florida to do this. Yeah. Yeah. 
screen, big screen. Um, since it's the first time I'm getting a question from oh, you. Oh, no, I was, I was, go ahead, this young lady. <laughs> um, Maybe sorry. I can go after. No, um, no, no. Uh, I just had a question about uh, the president's trip to uh, Israel. The administration has said that they're calling for a uh, thorough and independent investigation of the, the killing of the American journalist, Shirin Nagwakli. Yeah. Um, what's your assessment of where this investigation is, and is the president going to raise that issue during his trip? Uh, so I can say uh, we're in close touch with both Israel and Palestinian authorities and are working to bridge cooperation uh, between the parties. We have made clear our view to both Israeli and Palestinian officials. The administration's call for thorough, transparent, and impartial investigation uh, of of the of uh, Abu Akili's killing, we expect full accountability for those responsible. For, for those responsible, we have also urged that both sides share their evidence with each other, and we continue to call on sides to maintain calm and avoid further escalation. As far as uh, what will be on the agenda, what will be spoken uh, spoken about, I don't have an agenda to share with you. But as I've said many times from here, as we have said many times, is that the president is, will not shy away uh, to having a conversation. Uh, about human rights. Uh, that is something that's important to him. He said that most recently. Uh, and so uh, that's what I can tell you, but I don't have anything to read. I don't want to get ahead of his trip. Right. Go ahead. Thank you Go ahead. I was trying to give her. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming back to me. And uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, this is the first time I've been able to ask you a question, so I'd like to ask you too if that's all right. Um, <laughs> first, first is just a clarification on the new online policy task force that was set up that the vice president is leading, and then the second one about a significant press access issue that's impacting a lot of us in this room. Okay. Um, the first one on the online policy task force that the vice president's leading that's getting kicked off today. Mm -hmm. Um, on a background call last night, we were told that it's going to be different from the Disinformation Governance Board um, in that it's going to focus on illegal conduct online. But the memo creating it was a little bit broader and uh, mentioned, and I'm quoting from the document, uh, quote, online harassment, abuse, and disinformation campaigns targeting women and LGBTQI plus <coughs> individuals who are public and political figures. Um, could you clear up the disinformation charge? Of so I would need to uh, talk to her team. I was not on the background call, uh, so that specific um, uh, language that you're you're providing to me, I would just have to check in with her. I would also encourage you to check to check as well with her her team. Um, I can't say more because I, I wasn't on the background call. Thank you. And yeah. uh, the press access issue, um, for more than a year now, uh, the White House press office has been having uh, everyone in this room RSVP to presidential events in the East Room, the State Dining Room, the Executive Office Building, um, and then there is a process where people are selected and able to go into these presidential events where the president often takes questions. Mm -hmm. um, the Correspondence Association has tried in vain to figure out how this process works. Um, and over time, it has kind of morphed into a bit of a blacklist where certain large media outlets, such as my own, are oh, almost a blacklist. Never... That's, that's, well, I'm, that's... I, I'm just saying I represent oh. the fourth largest newspaper in the country, and I have been selected since November. Um, so can you? That's a that's a that's a jump for to a blacklist. But I'm listening. I'm listening. Well, I mean, it's not just me. Certain others. Oh, are okay. Busy. I didn't I didn't realize and that. And the Correspondence okay. Association actually wants this to be done away with. But I was hoping that you could. I know you're new in the position, but yeah. perhaps explain how the. Can I look into works. it? Can I look yeah. into this? Because I I actually uh, don't know what your the the process that you're speaking of. I think blacklisting is is a is a very. Uh, strong word to use. Uh, we have been, you know, we have been make, we try to make sure, do our best to make sure that uh, press gets to hear uh, from the president directly. Uh, it is important for us. It is important for you all. It's important for the American people. Uh, and so that has been a priority. So let me look into this process that you're speaking of. I, I you know, without having all the. Getting an answer to the Correspondence Association. I, 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 I speak, you're talking about Steve, and Steve yes. Portnoy. I talk to Steve all the time. We're talking, I believe, if not today, Day, tomorrow we're checking in and we'll have that conversation that for sure. I'm sure he'll bring it up Karin, and so we'll have that conversation. Karin, why do you keep doing this? Say that you call on people you've never oh. called on. And you don't really call I just I just called on someone. Right Go ahead. Karin, okay. you, you have the last doing question. Doing a great job as press secretary. So, yeah. Thanks. So, what, what, you took a you know, question earlier about, about Clarence Thomas. And yeah. you said it was up to the up to the court to decide. Yeah. And my understanding is not really up to the court to decide. It's up to him to decide. So the question is, can well, no. I think the question that I got was, does do we think uh, the, the Clarence Thomas should recuse himself? Is that the question yeah. that you're so asking? I, he's in the position of deciding whether he ought to recuse well, himself. Well, then it's up to him. I'm just saying that I'm not going to comment from here. Uh, so really, was what. I, that's that's not for that's not for me to decide. And just last one here. on MBS. Uh, I mean, is it the White House policy to not 
publicly identify MBS as being responsible for authorizing the killing of Khashoggi? What, I, what I'm saying to you is that we take the, take the killing very seriously. Uh, we put out a report. I, ju I just laid out what the Khashoggi ban uh, actually did, just to be more the visa and what, what specifically uh, the ban did, and also how we, we've enacted it. Um, and, uh, you know, this is something that we take very, very seriously. That's why I released the report. You have heard the press from the president directly speak about uh, the killing of Khashoggi. The president is does not shy, shy away of having having conversations uh, about human rights with leaders. He's had them many times before, and he will continue to do that. Uh, and, you know, and, uh, and this is, uh, again, this is something that we take very, very seriously. Thank you all. Human rights, all